So I wanted to do a video on what you should eat for HPV and cervical dysplasia. So what is the preferred sort of quote unquote HPV diet? Now there isn't really a specific HPV diet. Um, however, there is research published that kind of leads us in a direction of what a person should be eating when they're um, confronted with HPV and or um, dysplasia. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just a plant-based diet. So um, a diet that's replete or high in fruits and vegetables is pretty much it. Um, there's some specific studies that look at carotenoid compounds, for example, which are like um, the dark green um, coloring, yellow, orange, red, things like that. So it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward though. So I wanted to do this video and give an actual visual representation. So rather than just talk about it, I'll do both. I'll talk about it and I'm actually gonna um, have like a show and tell and, and actually show the foods. And this is pretty much how I eat myself. Um, you know, it's primarily a plant-based, ideally a whole food plant-based diet is, is, is the approach, um, you know, you should be taking to deal with this. Ideally, a plant-based, like a whole food plant-based diet is the approach that you really should be taking with diet. So what you wanna be thinking about is just getting the colors of the rainbow throughout the day. So you wanna be getting dark green vegetables, red, orange, yellow, blue, all different colors like that, um, because then you're gonna ensure that you're getting all these different plant chemicals, many of which have been shown to help prevent cervical dysplasia help prevent that sort of dysplastic process, the, the process whereby the virus um, causes malignant transformation or transforms a normal cell into a malignant cell. So breakfast, what I like for breakfast is a, um, a smoothie. Smoothies are great because you can load them with all sorts of things that you might not normally eat. Now I did a video specifically on smoothies and um, what I like about a smoothie is you can put my smoothie, I put garlic and ginger in it. Garlic and ginger are phenomenal. Um, they're antiviral, they're antibacterial, they're immune, immune stimulating, anti-inflammatory. So um, that smoothie that I do, and I do this pretty much myself on a daily basis, has banana, blueberries, ginger, garlic, greens. So I'll do like, um, a lot of times I'll do kale. Maybe in addition to the kale, I might put in a little bit of a spring mix or some sort of spinach or mixed greens. Um, avocado. Avocado is important. And this goes not only for a smoothie, but also for doing any sort of vegetables by themselves. Like if you do a really big salad or something, um, you want to have some fat in there with it because some of the nutrients are fat soluble. So if you don't have any fat in there whatsoever, it may impair some of the absorption of some of the things that you want to be getting. So the avocado is important for that reason because it's, it's high fat, but it's also makes it kind of creamy. So it makes the smoothie more palatable. Um, and then you can also put powders. Um, you know, I talk about that in my, in my smoothie video, as far as different types of powders and things like that. And then I also put, um, ground flax seed in my smoothie and then just um, top it off with water that's pretty pretty much it and then again like I said in 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 line with eating the colors of the rainbow then the other thing that I would do for breakfast would be um, like squash so this is butternut squash and um, you can buy it in the frozen food section so rather than deal with the squash which is kind of a pain to cut up you can buy bagged cubed um, butternut squash, sweet potatoes as well, but you can get that in the freezer section. They come in bags that are basically, you know, kind of like two servings per bag. So I'll throw those on the stove top, let them simmer for, you know, five, 10 minutes. And then I have two servings worth of either butternut squash or, or sometimes I'll do sweet potatoes too. But you're getting the, again, you're getting the carotenoid compounds. You're getting the orange coloring that's in those um, vegetables, which is what you want to be doing. Lunchtime. So my recommendation is that you do one big salad meal per day. So whether you do that for lunch or you do that for dinner, I would do one, um, one meal that's just basically a big salad. So here is my big salad. Um, so what do I put on it? So as you can see on the salad, I have um, black beans, I have um, red onion, quinoa, avocado, raw walnuts, carrot, beets, 
um, and then some mixed greens, um, like spring mix in, in this one. As I said earlier, you wanna be trying to get the colors of the rainbow. So if you're trying to do a meal out of a salad, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need enough calories in it. And I mean, part of that depends on whether you need to lose weight or whether you're trying to lose weight. If you're, if you're trying to lose weight, well, then you wanna keep the calories a little bit on the lower side. But otherwise, what you need to do if you're trying to make a meal out of a salad is you need to have some protein in there and you also need to have a um, little bit of fat and then also some, you know, some, some carbohydrate. So in this salad, I have quinoa. Quinoa is a great option for a starch. It, it's pretty high protein, it's high fiber. So that's a good option for um, getting some extra calories in there. And then the black beans, black beans are super high fiber. They're high protein. Um, the walnuts have some protein in there too and then and some fat and then again the avocado just like in the smoothie putting a little bit of avocado and I wouldn't go overboard on the um, on the avocado you know I usually would do maybe about half an avocado no maybe about a quarter of an avocado um, in a salad just to get a little bit of fat in there so that you get better absorption of some of the fat soluble nutrients in there and then again colors of the rainbow you're getting some black from the black beans because the colors colors can you know antioxidants and phytochemicals confer color so black is another color of foods that's going to have some um, types of antioxidants and things in so the black beans are giving you that the carrots have beta carotene and some other carotenoid compounds same thing with the beets are going to have some carotenoid compounds and their beets are nice too and i do pickled beets because then you want to be thinking what do you want to put on the salad like what sort of salad dressing do you want to be using and i don't put any oil like i try again i try to do whole food plant-based which means i'm not doing things that are are processed something like olive oil or any other type of oil for that matter is actually processed um so i try to avoid that so my recommendation is not to be putting oil on your salad but rather either balsamic vinegar um, or if you have pickled beets so the beets are really good because they do a couple things if they're pickled you're getting a bit of vinegar in there which is always nice to have on a salad but then the beets are also sweet so um you know i'll put i'll put on you know and i get sliced beets so the beets are great you can get them at the store um there's i forget the brand but it comes in a glass jar and they're sliced pickled beets and they're excellent so even if you're not a real big beet fan which I would never have classified myself as a big beet fan, but these beets are really, really good and they sweeten up the salad. So they, they counter some of the bitterness that you might get some, from some of the greens and everything like that. So um, big salad like that, good idea. Dinner. So I am having a lentil soup as well as a, um, you know, because I had a big salad for lunch, then I would do something like, um, you know, a bunch of broccoli and maybe some quinoa. Now notice I had quinoa on my um, my salad at lunch. I liked, I'm lazy and I don't like to be cooking all the time. Um, so I try to do everything, you know, in batches so that I'm not constantly cooking. So if I cook quinoa, I cook, you know, at least a good, um, maybe a couple cups of dried quinoa so that I have plenty of quinoa that'll last for days where I can put it, add it to my salads. And then I can do the same thing. I can add it to like, um, as a side, you know, you need to have something simple and reproducible. Otherwise you're not going to be able to do it on a daily basis. So, um, you know, it's nice to have things that are more interesting. And if you have time, you can do some other types of recipes or other types of plant-based recipes. But um, for the most part, you need something that's going to be really easy to maintain from day to day and doing something like the quinoa is really easy. And then, um, I have broccoli with this too, because I didn't do any broccoli with my lunch or on the salad at lunch, but broccoli is part of brassica family and brassica family vegetables are high in sulforaphane compounds like indole 3 carbonyl I3C or diindolylmethane, which is um, DIM. Those are really good for HPV and dysplasia and, and may help also reverse dysplasia. So it's good to be doing something like broccoli um, at some point during the day like I am with this. And then, you know, soups. I like soups. So again, because I did the salad at lunch, I would do, you know, um, the soup at dinner or I would do a soup and salad at lunch sometimes depending, but soups are nice because you can make a giant batch of it, um, especially vegan soups, uh, some type of bean soup. This one happens to be a lentil soup. 
they last for at least a week. So you can put them in the fridge for a week. They don't spoil very easily. You can freeze, they freeze pretty well too, so you can freeze half. But I'll, I'll make a really, a, a giant um, kettle of some type of bean soup once a week. And then um, I'll eat it every day, um, at least once a day. And then sometimes I'll freeze part of it and then you can kind of interchange where you can, if you do that on a regular basis where you're cooking maybe one a week and then you're freezing part of it, then you can unthaw part. So you can be having some variety of soup. But I have, you know, four or five different vegan soups, um, kind of go-to soups. This one's a lentil one. I have a black lentil, which is uh, has Indian spices in it. It's a Del Makhni beluga lentil type soup, which is really good. And then um, I have a black bean soup also and some other black bean type recipes so the soups are really good um and again you know if you're looking at maintaining a more plant-based diet you need to be eating beans and beans actually correlate really well with longevity it's probably one of the best correlated foods with healthy aging longevity and diminished um, chronic disease at least in part because they're really high fiber and they're also a good source of protein so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please hit the like button below and um, subscribe to my channel.